In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Mother of perpetual help, grant that I may ever invoke your powerful name, the protection of the living and the salvation of the dying. Purest Mary, let your name henceforth be ever on my lips. Delay not, blessed lady, to rescue me whenever I call on you. In my temptations, in my needs, I will never cease to call on you, ever repeating your sacred name, Mary, Mary. What a consolation, what sweetness, what confidence fills my soul when I utter your sacred name or even only think of you. I thank the Lord for having given you so sweet, so powerful, so lovely a name. But I will not be content with merely uttering your name. Let my love for you prompt me ever to hail you, Mother of Perpetual Help, Mother of Perpetual Help. Pray for me and grant me the favors I confidently ask of you. O Mother of Perpetual Help, through your grace and intercession, we ask for your assistance for an end to the coronavirus pandemic, for the continual growth of holiness in our parish, an increase in our daily lives of the fire of our Catholic faith, for the needs and intentions of our parish, for the intentions of those for whom the candle before your image is burning this week, and for the intentions that we hold now in the silence of our hearts. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, our Father and Protector. Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton, our Holy Patron. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, before we enter into these most sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, and we ask God for his pardon and his peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Constantly shape our minds, we pray, O Lord, by the practice of good works, that trying always for what is better, we may strive to hold ever fast to the Paschal mystery through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After staying in Antioch some time, Paul left and traveled in orderly sequence through the Galatian country of Phrygia, bringing strength to all the disciples. A Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, an eloquent speaker, arrived in Ephesus. He was an authority on the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and with ardent spirit spoke and taught accurately about Jesus, although he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wanted to cross into Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. After his arrival, he gave great assistance to those who had come to believe through grace. He vigorously refuted the Jews in public, establishing from the scriptures that the Christ is Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is king of all the earth. God is king of all the earth. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God is King of all the earth. For King of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God is King of all the earth. The princes of the peoples are gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham, for gods are the guardians of the earth. He is supreme. God is king of all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have not asked anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. I have told you this in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but I will tell you clearly about the Father. On that day you will ask in my name, and I do not tell you that I will ask the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have come to believe that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have here today, my brothers and sisters, one of my favorite scripture passages, if not the most favorite of all of my scripture passages, and it is simply this line, that for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have come to believe that I came from God. It is Christ's 
words that he speaks to the to the apostles, to the disciples, as he's getting ready to go back to the Father, he assures them that it is not only him that loves them, but that the Father himself loves them, cherishes them, provides for them, right? And he says, it is the great desire of my heart that you too would know this. Right? We hear that this next chapter. We're in John 16 here. We're about to hear the high priestly prayer of Christ in the garden, where again Jesus addresses the whole thing to his Father. Father, this is eternal life, that they would know you and the Christ that you have sent. Jesus is filled not only with this great love, this burning love of his Father, but Jesus wants wants and desires. You can hear the intensity of the way in which he speaks here today, his disciples to know that same love. And that love comes to us through the powerful gift of Pentecost. That is what the Spirit is, the Spirit of adoption, the Spirit of the Father, that as the Spirit grows within us, we should be crying out ever more fully, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, it establishes us. It brings us as the spirit of adoption into that intimate relationship with the Father that the world does not know, that the flesh does not know, that the fallen state of humanity does not know. Because that's what sin is. Sin is orphanhood. Sin is the rejection of the Father. It was from the very beginning, right? That essentially uh, is what Satan is, is he is an orphaned, orphaned creature, right? He has rejected the Father and the Father's plan, right? So for us, as we're coming up here now, we're in the middle of the Pentecost Novena, as we think about what we want to ask the Holy Spirit for, we should be asking him for whatever your needs are, but also asking him that the awareness of the Father's love be growing in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, right? It should permeate us in the same way that the dew kind of soaks into the grass overnight, that it's an awareness that is impressed upon us as the Spirit himself grows within us. And this, more than anything, is what Satan will fight, right? He does not know the Father's love, and he does not want us to know the Father's love. So you can say, well, Father, I don't exactly experience this this way. Believe me, my brothers and sisters, nothing is under greater attack in your or in my soul than this reality right here. It's constantly trying to uh, dislodge us out of that place of unity, out of that place of sonship or daughterhood, and take us back into the world, into purely the state of the flesh, into our fallen experience. Right? That's what the demons work on all day long to affect our emotive life so that we do not taste, so to say, uh, that experiential knowledge of the Father's care, the Father's love, the Father's closeness to us. It should be something that we pray into each and every day. It is the gift of the Spirit for us, but it is something that we have to continually ask for. This is why Jesus says, ask and you will receive, and when you see when you see that the Father himself answers you, you will be filled with joy. There's no more beautiful thing than the prayer or a prayer of a soul that is fulfilled because it is the way that God continually says to us, I love you, I care for you, I provide for you, you're secure in my presence, right? His paternal love is assured to us and we get to see that and taste that in the ways in which he answers us, if we but ask. So part of the gift of Pentecost and what the Spirit should be doing within us as we're praying for his growth is should be growing in this prayer of petition, crying out, 
crying out, right? That we hear that over and over again in Scripture that the Spirit himself will be praying within you. The Spirit himself will be crying out to the Father for our needs, even when they're deeper than we know how to acknowledge. So today, we ask God for uh, a deeper awareness of his paternal love, the grace to fight whatever fights that awareness in our lives, and the grace to pray into the Spirit's gift with Christ himself, and to know that our prayer will be answered most assuredly. Please stand as we now offer our prayers and our petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our leaders in the church that they may with an ardent spirit speak and teach accurately about Jesus. We pray to the Lord. That those who have come to believe in Jesus through grace may be at the forefront of every battle for the right to life, justice, and human dignity in our world, we pray to the Lord. That Jesus, who came from the Father into the world and now leaves the world to return to the Father, may prepare for us a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. That the Father, who already loves us to the point of giving us his only Son, may glorify Jesus by granting all the petitions we bring to this Eucharist and in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. That the power of this holy sacrifice may free those who have died in Christ to take their place in the kingdom of his joy, we pray to the Lord. And for the repose of Gail Deverna, and for Lou Abergo, that all that Lou needs right now in his life would be given to him, and that Gail's soul would rest in eternal peace before the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, these are our prayers and our petitions. Father, we lay them on the altar of Our Lady, Mother of Mercy's Immaculate Heart. We unite them with the prayers of all the holy apostles, the prayers of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, the prayers of St. Joseph. We ask some of you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us, the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Now let us pray, my brothers and sisters, our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. 